lights are out, you stumble in the dark You kept pushing on, but then you went too far Alrighty, I'm sure you guys have heard the news now. Um, it's been all over the place about Marineland officially lobbying to be up for sale. Now, I can tell you it has been up for sale much longer um, than yesterday. Uh, it's been up for sale for nearly, like, th since the beginning of the pandemic almost. It's been starting the procedures for being up for sale. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna discuss all of the news because this is super confusing to me, like really confusing. Now I do know exactly what they're lobbying for, and I have dived extremely deep into exactly what this means. And I'm gonna tell you, it means really good things. So for those of you that don't know, well, Marineland has lobbied to the we Ontario government to put itself up for sale and has asked for some changes to its designated land for development um, it's also asked for some tax breaks uh to invest in, in some rides and attractions the um for the tourist uh, the attraction Today, um and it's also asking for aid in being up for sale which is extremely um confusing to me because i'm going to be honest like our our sources for Greenland are pretty like good like we've been pretty accurate for a lot of things at Marineland, and from what I understood, Marineland had been sold. Um, and again, what I'm about to say is 100% speculation, especially now, um, and especially take this with a grain of salt, because it appears there could be some inaccuracy amongst this, or there's just a, another option has been presented to me that it has still been sold, but Marineland is asking for these tax breaks and um, zoning changes of the land to help the new owners so again pure speculation right here but our impression was that kellogg's 100 kellogg's lane um it's an entertainment family complex out in hamilton were going to be the new owners of marineland or at least they had made a bid to be the new owners of marineland again that is 100 percent just speculation um, but I was under the impression that they were going to be the new owners and that hit had already gone through and we were supposed to hear sometime in January. Um, so that was supposed to be, uh, the new year was supposed to be the announcement. And now here we are hearing that Marineland is lobbying to be up for sale in January. And, um, they're asking for tax breaks to invest in new attractions on the land and zoning changes to the land so that developments can be made attractions and all that on the land which was also interesting to me because i didn't know that they had zoning bylaws on their land that prevented them from building attractions which might make sense as to why they only build in certain areas now i don't know the zoning map and what it looks like of all of marine land that'd be super interesting so if any of you actually know how to get that or look for it let me know because i am super intrigued they do have a lot of wetlands uh, as you can see actually right before you right now that wasn't even planned um so that might be part of the problem as well but it does look like marineland has lobbied to change its development um which has me thinking that there might even be some bigger players at play because if the f if 100 kellogg's lane was the buyer i can't see them investing um the kind of investments that would need all of the land changed now there are two ways or two ways to look at this. Um, they could be rezoning some of the land for residential and condominiums and stuff like that because Cole's gonna hate me for saying this, but there is no one that is gonna be able to buy a thousand acres in Niagara Falls on prime land and not be able to sell or not have to sell some of that land for development. There, like, there's no one that can afford a thousand acres in Niagara Falls for a small scale theme park. No matter how you look at this, this is a tiny, essentially family run theme park in Niagara Falls, and it's run extremely poorly. Um, if I had to put that, uh, not the people working there, just how it's run. I, there are so many things this park could have done to save its image, and it really irks me. I can make that in a whole separate video. I'm actually so pissed off uh, with Marie and her team. Like, it just really ticks me off that they're just sitting there allowing their image to be torn to shreds and they're just not even like 
showcasing some of the things we do. We know a lot of people that actually work at Marineland as marine biologists and work with the animals, and there is a lot of good that they do do. Now, there are obviously some things I strongly disagree with, like the bear exhibit. Can't stand it. I think it's horrible. Um, but I can tell you the whale is extremely well taken care of. And if you were to go back three years and look at videos of the whale and watch videos of the whale now, there is a significant difference in its behavior. So I just want to put that out there. Like, as someone who knows some of the people who work directly with this whale, who literally have said they would not let Marineland treat that whale badly. And I strongly believe in those people. Like... I, I've seen the toys, I've seen the food, I've seen the enrichment training and all that that they've been doing, and this is new. I will say this is new training and new, uh, almost like playtime in the last couple years. So there is a difference, and I'm not saying Marineland has always treated uh, their animals right or all of their animals right, but there is a change and it has been benefiting. But that aside, um, I think this is really good news. So if the Ontario government does respond to this, which I'm not sure they're going to. Um, it was interesting because when the media had reached out to the Ontario Government um, Association or whatever they want to call it, it they kind of said like they hadn't reached out to Marineland or responded to Marineland, and it almost seemed kind of like snarky, as if they had no interest in doing it. So uh, that could be a little difficulty as well. Um, and no matter how you look at it, again, coming back to the thousand acres and the fact that they do have animals, it is going to be really hard to sell this property. Um, I don't know a theme park company that wants to come in knowing the image of Marineland and take over the ownership of these animals. Uh, you have Kiska, who's extremely old. You have a lot of the even um, beluga whales, which are too old to move as well. Um, or relocate. So even if a theme park company or a company came in and wanted to buy it, relocating these animals is almost impossible for a lot of the older generation of those animals. They're too old to move. It's too risky. Um, there's a lot of danger that could happen in even just the transport phase. So you're almost stuck with these animals and that kind of sucks. Um, for the animals and the new theme park company that would want to operate it, because I'm sure any theme park company that is interested in buying Marineland wants nothing to do with the animals, um, which is good news for both activists. But unfortunately, these animals can't be released into the wild. I look at a lot of these activist posts and not the activists themselves. I know they're a lot more educated and know better that you can't just simply pick up some of these elderly animals and move them and transport them for long periods of time. It's extremely dangerous. But I see a lot of, like just free them like if you threw Kiska in the ocean right now, she would not survive. The only thing option for Kiska is to go to a pen, like a, a rehabilitation pen or something like that. I don't know too much about that. So, uh, again, don't come for me. I understand your side of the argument. But the transport phase of that would be dangerous for Kiska as well. Um, now, the land animals, I'd like to see them all go. Um, uh, there's a lot I'd like to see uh, happen at Marineland, and hopefully it does. Again, some of the plans we had heard uh, through the rumor mill were the land animals who were going to be the first to be kind of like gotten out of there and then obviously they can't get rid of the marine animals it's too dangerous for a lot of them so they were just going to start a lot of like working with some universities and stuff like that um, for training and education so those are some of the things that I think would help the park but you're gonna like with those tax breaks let's say someone does buy marine land and they are given those tax breaks by the government um, and the zoning changes, that's going to be really good news. You could see like a really big player coming in and making some really big investments on this massive plot of land in a really prime location. Again, if you built some hotels, a water park, a good coaster, even some good family rides with some good theming, you're going to draw people in. Like Niagara Falls is busy. Any holiday, it's busy. So having something, owning this location would be prime for anyone. So I can't see why people aren't interested in it. I just think the thousand acres and the animals are a big play in why Marineland's having some trouble. Anyways, that's my thoughts right now. I'll continue to inform you guys of anything I know. Um, I Again, I am just as shocked as you that what's happening is happening. We should have known the new owners by now. So hopefully the, we are right and it is who we thought. Um, but we'll have to see. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully this helped explain anything about those tax breaks um, and the land zoning changes. 
Um, again, we'll for, uh, fill you guys in as we know more. We are reaching out to anyone we know, even local businesses. I have reached out to a specific attraction there that might know. Um, so I'll let you guys know what I know. Have a good one, guys. Bye.